more time just to say, Lord, we love you, we praise you, we worship, and we adore you. And Father God, we just thank you for being God all by yourself. And God, I'm asking that you just touch and bless each and every one of us who are listening either by Zoom or LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever method they are get, <clears throat> getting on. And then touch us collectively as we are all your children and we all can use a touch from you because just a touch from you, Father, will make everything all right. And Father, I thank you in advance for hearing and answering this prayer. Father, I'm praying it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have a scripture, or do you feel like it? Or? Yes, ma'am. I have it's a really short, small scripture, and this is coming out of Philippians chapter four. Who? Philippians chapter four. Okay. And this is chapter four, and this is verses uh, five through six. Okay. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, mm -hmm. but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And that's Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just allowing us one more time to come before your throne of grace, Heavenly Father. Although we are not worthy, Heavenly Father, you are Heavenly Father. You reign above all, Heavenly Father. Even those who have other gods before you, you still reign above them, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, even though this world is changing, Mm -hmm. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have remained the same. Heavenly Father, we see the troubles of this world. We see the destruction, Heavenly Father. We see the wars that we have against one another, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes. And it's not just wars between countries, Heavenly Father. We're dealing with spiritual warfare, Heavenly Father. We're dealing with wars even in our homes, Heavenly Father. Yes, We're yes. We're dealing with wars on our jobs within employment, Heavenly Father. We're even dealing with wars within our church, Heavenly Father. But, Heavenly Father, we know that you are not an author of this confusion, Heavenly Father. And we know that, Heavenly Father, that in due time, you're going to make all things right, Heavenly Father. Even though we might not understand it, Heavenly Father, we will begin to know that you are our Lord God. Heavenly Father, we ask that you look down upon those that are going through anxiety and depression, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we know that there is just an un amount of those that they have tried to place saying that they have mental health problems, Heavenly Father. And could it be, Lord, that these people have just maybe stepped a little bit away from you, Lord? Because we know, Lord, that you will heal a broken heart, Heavenly Father. We know, Lord, that you will bring comfort to those that are in grief. We know, Heavenly Father, that you are a doctor in a sick room that has never lost a patient, Heavenly Father. And although there are those whose bodies might be breaking and aching with pain, Heavenly Father, we know, Lord, that you have given gifts to those that will heal and provide all cures, Heavenly Father, if we just believe. Heavenly Father, we ask that you help us to grow and learn in your way, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that we've even been allowed to set aside time to study your word, Heavenly Father. Help us lead not to our own understanding, Heavenly Father, but continue, continue to direct our path, Heavenly Father. Order our steps in your way, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, when we know we can't step any farther, Lord, we know 
that you will provide and you will carry us the rest of the way, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we know that even with additional footprints in the sand, Heavenly Father, we know that those footprints are yours, Heavenly Father, and that we may keep them embedded in our heart. Lord God, we ask that you now touch Pastor White as she brings and renders teachings of your word, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will crown her head with wisdom and knowledge as she brings us forth, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, this is my prayer. Ask this and all our many blessings of your Son, Christ Jesus. I do pray and do not ask. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer. I had pulled out another scripture, Psalms 25. God, prayer for guidance and protection. And I, because we certainly need protection. Amen. And I just read it in its entirety and we will move on. It's Psalms 25. And I'll read verses. I started verse one and I may. I'll go through the entirety. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed who transgress without a cause. Show me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. And on thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgression according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All of the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as kept his, keep his covenant and testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sin. Consider mine enemies, for they are many. And they hate me with the cruel hatred. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. The word of God for the people of God. As I was reading through this, this, this scripture of Psalm, I said, I could teach that talking about the situation that we are going through in this world. But it is... It is as perverse. It is wicked to its core. But can nobody help us but the Lord? And if we call out on him, call out to him as the scripture says, we're going to be all right. Because I'm like David. I've been old, I've been young, and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous because forsaken or bragging bread. Mm. <laughs> and that's a true saying. God is this God, the same God, the day as he was way back when and yesterday, and he's going to be the same God forever. But okay, let us continue looking at the wickedness and deception, deceptive schemes that Satan brings about. And cause 
man is perversely wicked in his heart. And he just can't seem to shake loose from the clutches of Satan that he has him chained and locked in a mental evil jail. And the only deliverer is God himself. And uh, when we can look, we start at verse uh, 21 of Proverbs. Uh, is that verse 21? Mm-hmm. What chapter? 14th chapter, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. No, we got it. I just want to make sure I was on the right page. Okay, okay. we got it. That, yeah, and it's looking at the deceptive, deceptiveness of the evil, wicked people. It is. It makes you wonder sometimes how can man's heart be so evil? And I often say, God didn't allow you to grow up that way. You had to go to a school somewhere in order to become so wicked. But the school is that the world is a evil teach it teaches evil because the evil is so powerful and it looks so enticing until he man and they say, Oh, I need to get that. That looks good to me. Let me just oh, and it's feel good. If you've heard that phrase that what looks good to you may not be good for you. So that's what we look at in evil and how it is so deceptive and destructive, but it has that sweet taste to it till you just want to eat it if you eat ice cream eater, eat more and more and more. And pretty soon, as the late Reverend Clark used to say, you pretty soon you've nibbled your way to lostness. And that is, it's never been a more truer saying than what we are seeing today. We thought it was bad back in the day. But now you cannot hardly read the news where there's one or two, three or four, five, just getting shot and killed and all of this nonsense. And I'm saying, why, 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 why? And the answer always come back that man is just wicked and he's caught up in Satan traps. And he can't seem to find his way out. Okay, now that can happen to a lot of folks who say that they are Christian and they want to keep looking at the sin and how good it looks. And they said, well, I'll just tip over here for a minute. And pretty soon they don't know where they are. And scripture plainly tells us that you cannot serve two masters. You either going to be, uh, you can't, it's not a straddle of defense. You either going to be in a crisis camp or you're going to be in the devil's camp. It's just that simple. And I'm all leading up to this verse 21 that we left off talking about how the humbleness and how rich friends have more friends because man in his mindset feel if you are rich, you are somebody. But if your heart is not right, you are nobody. I can have all of the money in the world and two or three palatial homes. But if my heart is not of for God and of God, then I'm still poor. And verse 21, so let me get to it now. I, I don't get this sum in it. It reads as follows. He that despises his neighbor, sin it. But he that has mercy on the poor, happy is he. And let me just read this. Uh, well, verse 22. Do they not err that devise evil? Now, that's a profound question. But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. So he's, 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 he's looking at, and it's leading up to what I was saying, that when how perversely wicked he is. He despises his neighbor. And that goes against our second commandment, when he says simply this, we are supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. And you can't love him and hate him at the same time. I know I think we might have left off with this part, talking about uh, love and hate can't, say, can't reside in the same house. It just doesn't work. Now, 
<laughs> but he tells us this. Uh, men, and it's very known that we are commanded to love our neighbor. And now if we don't do that, uh, it takes this before 22nd verse in the complex. Do they not err that devise evil? So the short answer to that is yes, they do. Because they are breaking or violating or disobeying the second commandment. We don't even get to the first commandment when it says you're supposed to love the God, that God with all that heart and all that soul and all that being. We don't get there because uh, in order for us to have a horizontal relationship, we have to have a vertical relationship. So if we can't love our neighbor who we see every day, how can we say we love God whom we never seen? John tells us you just not telling the truth. He tells us that. So when we say, do they go astray when they the woes who devise evil? Yes, they are. Because they've taken love out of the picture completely. And going back to what we was talking about, that was so profound in your prayer when you was talking about the evilness that's going on in our world, is that uh, it, it seems that there's no love there. Why would somebody just deliberately kill somebody else? And I just on the news, I just saw it in glancing today that two elderly women was assaulted in their own house. Now he he they weren't the only one. They found him. He had assaulted some other people somewhere else. Then I'm speaking to the wickedness and the evilness of the person Paul. Now, he might, your neighbor don't have to be your next door neighbor. Your neighbor could be your fellow man anywhere. Amen. So why would you just, now these two little old women, minding their own business in their own house, hear this uh, person, I'm trying to be nice, uh, broke in and assaulted both of them. It was too bad they couldn't overpower him and beat him to next week. I just, I don't have any mercy or sympathy for some evil, wicked-minded person who will harm our young people, our babies, and older people. They are the vulnerable, but we all need protection. As, uh, as Psalms 25 said, Oh, I will lift up my heels and my eyes into the hills. That's not the one, but he says, asking for mercy. He said, I will look uh, unto thee, O Lord. I will lift up my whole soul. Lord, I need your protection. Because we are living in a fallen world, okay? And we know God is on his way back. Satan knows it too. That's why he ramped up his attacks on humanity. And he's trying to his job, and that's his mission. It's like Christ's mission was to go to the cross and save humanity. He left us a perfect example on how to live in humble and humility and respecting one another. But Satan goes just the opposite. His mission is to destroy, to de Kill and derail us our, our walk with Christ. Those of us who are there walking with him. Now the ones who are already out there in his camp, he just wounding them up tighter and tighter. So that, as I said, they're in that spiritual jail, incarcerated. And they don't know how to plead to God for their release. He's the only one can release them from their spiritual captivity. He did it because he come and died for the sins of the world. He did it. So, uh, there's no love and all this hate. It just cannot be. But on the other hand, those who are Loving their neighbor, 
they find mercy, they, 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 I'll say exudes mercy and they stand on the truth and they're going to always do good. They find a way to try to help somebody else. And they, uh, and I'll venture to say they live, this is, this is one of, this is their motto or one of, do all the good that you can for as long as you can and for as many as you can. Those according to scripture is blessed. Okay, now, see, and if I can just step back for a moment, how to come out to rich and all of that, God knows a person's heart. We only see the outward appearances. And when we find one of those who are saying that they are Christian, put on that Christian facade, and as Jesus calls them, a plain hypocrite, but God knows the truth. We can be fooled because some can put on such a facade that it's just unreal. Now, remember I told you, uh, we discussed, Satan is a master at disguises, and he has a, many of them in his repertoire to bring forth. And we have to pray and ask God and thank God for the spirit of discernment and th that we can discern when this is, what they call him, uh, wolf in sheep clothing. He I mean. is a, he's nothing more than Satan. And it's in the scripture in our Old Testament. I can't tell you which one because I don't remember that. That the prophet told him, spoken through God, he told him, so I see your lips moving where you are giving me, and I'm paraphrasing, half-hearted praises, but your heart is nowhere near me. And we see that today. Well, I guess now you, it's like yeah. you have a better understanding. And, and I guess and this is for those who might have seen the movie and it, the way they depicted the passion of the Christ. Okay, but it 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 takes you to that one um. Then it's when God is when Jesus is on the cross, mm -hmm. and he's repeating those seven stances, and the one that he re that he says, "Father, forgive them because they know not what they do." Because at one point, and and you can only imagine that God hit, looked at his son and he saw the looking glass. Of not just current sin, but sins that were to throughout come. the ages. Yes, and so that's why he literally had to turn his back for a moment on his own son, because when he saw the horrificness that's going on even today, and can you imagine you seeing that going on on your, you know, your your son, and he's taking on all this up, he's taking all this on, and he's on this cross dying of affliction but then he turned his own back on his own child because the sin was the sins were probably so perverse he was like even god had to turn away and look away from it so can, can you imagine the wickedness at that level uh yes and that's why it, it was a bit of field and struggle when christ who is god's son he is god was hanging there on that cross, dying for our sins. And the sins of the world and through all generations, and it became so uh, so heavy. And God is a God that he cannot look on sin. He turned his what he turned away. Even listen, the even the sun and the moon, all of that went out of control. And but yet Christ stood hung there anyway. And he was forsaken by his father. So what? We would never be forsaken. I don't care how bad the situation gets. We cry out to God. And guess what? He's right there on top. Because Christ took our sins. He bore. He didn't have any. So, yes. And see, that's why God is God. Because he can look all the way through the generation and see uh, all of what's going to happen before it happens. That's why when you hear the phrase, he's a God who knows the end from the beginning, he knew all of that. He knew these days 
was coming and they were going to get worse and worse as man's heart become more wickeder and wickeder. Yes, we have technology and all of the amenities uh, for convenience that our foreparents and paper for the laws didn't have. But what we are, uh, we are less appreciative than they ever were. They was always appreciative for what they had. But they never begged for bread. And that's when that scripture said, I'm, uh, you once was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. That is the true sin, and it ties right into these two scriptures we are talking about. How the evilness, the person that does all this has gone astray. But those who stay the course and stay focused and know where our protection and our helps come from, they're going to be blessed. And they are blessed because that saying is when you have God, you have all you need because he's our all in all. What is it that he can't do? Yeah, he's going to put Satan and all this wickedness is going to come to an end. But it's not his time yet. You remember back in the old days, when in the Bible days, when Israel was just going crazy and wouldn't listen to the prophets and God kept warning them. And he told them, now listen, if you don't change, I'm going to put you in captivity. I'm going to use a more wicked nation, worse than you are. So you playing wickedness. They are wicked. I'm going to allow them to come and just take you. And let them leave you over there for 70 years. But guess what? I'll be there with you. And he was true to his word. He was trying to get Satan's attention. I mean, not Satan, but Israel's attention to turn back to him. And live according to his ways and his uh, instead of chasing around after the world. Okay. Babylon in the scripture, I know in, in uh, Revelation, she's uh, depicted as the great whore because of the sinfulness that she represents. So, but in his time, in God's time, he came. And he delivered Israel back to their uh, homeland. And in a spiritual life, all of us who are saved was off them and wickedness. But he, the word kept going out. And he, we heard it and answered that he's been long suffering, given there's others who need to repent, time to repent. He really is. And let me say this this way. In my travels and communication and uh, with others, there is more people is turning back to God and some are turning to God because, I'll say two things. They see the handwritings on the wall and they recognize, I'll say, the error of their ways. There is no salvation in sin. The only thing they can look forward to in being in the evilness or the evil or sinful camp is death and destruction. Whereas on the other side, the righteous side, we have been assured eternal life. Good things happen to us. And yes, we go through different seasons of trials. God is strengthening our faith in him because he knows what's coming for us down the road. We don't. So he strengthens our faith to sometimes do trials. And then when we can pass that test, we are all right. Okay. Any questions or comments? Well, we kind of look at the 23rd verse when it talks about labor. Labor, and I want to look at it from a perspective of witnessing Christ as opposed to non witnessing Christ. 
it, you yeah. know, it kind of ties in with Isaiah, Isaiah 45. And mm -hmm. when you get down in the scripture and when he even even when God is giving you your just do, he even he says, though you do not even acknowledge me, mm -hmm. probably like you should more than often. I am I am the God. I'm still there for you. I'm still providing you. I'm still a provider. I'm giving you all these things, even though you don't even acknowledge who I am. And I'm the one that gives you light mm -hmm. when, provide, when it's time for darkness so you can go somewhere and go to sleep. Although folks don't sleep. But he also lets you know that I'm a God that, well, yeah, I can create disasters maybe to get your attention. Exactly. I allow them to happen so that you know who I am. Because we forget. Hmm. Yeah. More often than not. Unfortunately for us sometimes. Right. Now I'm just getting a message of all of these disasters this guy is just bringing. Okay. All right. 25, now, right? Hmm? We on 25, correct? No, I'm on 23. I ain't quite got there yet, but I, I'm going to get, get there soon because we always... Verse 23 says this. In all labor, there is profit. But mm. the talk of the lips tends only to purity. Okay, verse 24, and I'll read to 25. Nothing. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. And verse 25 says this A true witness delivers soul, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. Okay. Mm. Now I said I want to bring this from a spiritual part. Uh, point of view. Now, when it talks about that idle chatter leads to poverty, idle chatter, what are they talking about? They usually is talking about somebody or something that shouldn't be. They're not talking from a perspective of encouragement and uplifting. It's so always downgrading. And now the other point I want to make about uh, poverty is this. We as believers in Christ, we have been commissioned and endued with the Holy Spirit to witness to a dying world. And if we are not taking on that challenge uh, by doing that, because we are lazy. So how can we grow rich and working in Christ's vineyard? Remember, as scripture said, there's plenty of work to do, and I'm paraphrasing, but there's very few workers. Meaning, so many of us is afraid to witness. So they use all kinds of excuses for not witnessing. All you have to do is to be willing. God will tell you what to say. And as we read the scripture and study it for ourselves and know the truth of the scripture, you will always have something to witness Christ about, witness to others about Christ. And that's why that verse, 2 Timothy 2.15, is so important. Study to show thyself true unto God, as the workmen should not be ashamed of to rightly divide the truth. But once we know, then we can never, we always will have something to say. We don't have to hang our heads in shame or doubt about what we're going to say. And the other part of this is talking about those witnesses that are deceitful and they're not, and it really brings in false teachers who are going to teach something that's not biblically sound. Don't let me rephrase all of my sin. Those deceitful witnesses, it's no more, and I'll say this again wolf and sheep closing because they're going to tell something. That's not biblically sound or doctrinal truth. 
And it talks, goes, ties back into being able to witness the truth. And when we hear, know the truth. Know the truth for yourself. And we can go into scripture. Okay. But my other question I want to ask about that is why would somebody saying they're a child of God and yet is going to be deceitful in what he or she is teaching by not teaching the truth? Now, the true witness, they're going to only speak the truth. And I, I know you've heard me say this time and time again. The truth is going to stand on its own merit. And it's something about the truth that we'll know it when we hear it. We, it it, it's something of, about the I'm truth. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. It comes out of 2 Timothy 4 3, and that says, For the time will come when they will not endure. Sound but doctrine, sound doctrine, exactly. But want to have their ears tickled, you know. With this and, false doctrine, and you are exactly right. Thank you for getting me all the way there, you know. So I want to say this: we are in those times. Mm. People do not want to hear sound doctrine. They rather hear something that makes them feel good, and it is just it can be as far from the truth but they like to hear it. Let me use, sorry, if I can use this analogy. Remember those old gospel songs? Yes. That really meant something and was giving praises to God as, as compared to this, all of this contemporary gospel when it just you just moving into the beat and don't know what the words say whatsoever. Let's take this song. Uh, uh, you may know it, you may not. Just above my head, I hear singing in the air. What is that song? It's saying, I know there's a heaven somewhere. And I can hear it. That makes me know there is a heaven somewhere. I'm just the, saying. Right. I'm the just, one that says, God has, sh God has shined on me and he has set me free. Exactly. Thank God that but it's letting you know he has he given you another day. And it's not and you can say, Well, I can at least say thank you while I'm on this side of glory. Or give yeah. me a channel of your peace. I'm just asking for you to channel some peace within me so that I will stay grounded and rooted with you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Now, and it, it, it really what we are saying is ties into verse 26. He say, verse 26 says this, and the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. And what he's saying is, listen, that fear is that reverence for God. When we have that reverence or respect for God, we can stand in the faith of whatever evil that Satan brings to us with a confidence that I'm speaking the truth. I have truth on my side. God is truth. He is love and he's righteous. He's righteous. Okay. And the other part of this is that he going to give, he will, Psalms 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the almighty, and I'm paraphrasing again, he will find safety and the secret of God's uh, dwelling place. So we we don't have to be uh, fearful when we face challenges because with we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors because for who God, the Holy Spirit, lives in us. Question. And God is true to his word when he said this, I will never leave you nor forsake. I am your very present help in what? In the time of trouble. So when we hear all of these false witnesses, 
bringing well, and that's some of us don't want to hear it. I want to get nothing but the truth. And I go to worship. I want to hear the truth. Um, that I lost my thought. We know that they're lies, but he there's ones who are bringing those false. They are appealing to those that has those itchy ears. They don't want to hear the truth. But thank God that so many of us still want to hear the truth and will endure sound doctrine. Hmm. What if you have a sometimes, and I've heard people say that they'll say, Well, that's not my gift. And I think what it is is that they have more of a fear to witness the people. Not saying I don't blame them because you never know what a person's situation is and how, and how they're going to accept what you might be trying to, you know, get across to them as far as witnessing them about Christ. So a lot of times I think it's a level of fear. Well, okay, let me read verse 26 to you. 26, what it says. In the fear of the Lord is a strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Yeah, I know we're living in some in this times when you don't know who to talk to or who, what, or how to, but I, I, I hold to this fact, and I'm not saying be reckless and foolish when I witness it. God will, the Spirit will give us the desire on the, and, and to witness to that person and the, the approach to do so, okay? Uh, and then in verse 27 says this, the fear of the Lord, that's the reverence of the Lord, is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. That is saying a couple of things. When we reverence God, Life is secure because he is our protector, our provider, and our refuge and our salvation because he is our deliverer. He will bring us through. So then the, the other part of that, he says, uh, to depart from the snares of death. God, when we reverence God, God, the Holy Spirit, was direct us around this evil snare that the evil people or evil ones or Satan has set for us. That's his protection. He will deliver us around the pitfall. And when we go to Psalms 23, when it talks about he leading me beside the still waters, he going to take us uh, around those pitfalls of life where that has already been set for us, okay? Uh, and he said, lays me down in the green. He leads me beside the still waters. He's taking us around those snares. But, you know, sometimes we get hard-headed and don't want to listen to him. And he, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm just being real about it. He, he gets hard-headed and don't want to listen. Okay, but he still loves us and he just pick us up out and take us on and deliver us back to safety. And many will not stop and say, thank you for my deliverance. Thank you for not leaving me in that ditch and I can't get out. And it reminds me of the blind that Jesus healed when he was on the earth. Only one came back to say thank you. So the one that said thank you was an expression of gratitude or thankfulness where the others, and many of us fall in that crowd, was having a demonstrating uh, an attitude of entitlement. Well, you were supposed to do that for me. Yeah, maybe I was, because I'm being loved and merciful, but then if you listened to me, you wouldn't have been in it in the first place. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> but I remind, remind you that disciple Peter, he told, he said, one of y'all are going <laughs> not, one of y'all not even going to acknowledge me when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Peter. Mm -hmm. 
So we don't even give him acknowledgement when he do stuff. Like I said, out of Isaiah 45, you don't even acknowledge him when he has pulled you out of some situations. And some folks, if you can just hear them say, thank you, Jesus. That's right. For the little silk thing. That's a total reverence for God and acknowledging him for who he is, his sovereignty and his power and his knowledge. Right. Okay. All right. We might can finish up for uh, 28, verse 28. We might can finish up 28. And it says this. And the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. What is that saying here? Hmm. All of us who can honor the one true God is what? Is honor and blessings. But now listen to me. Look at here. Look at here. Uh, but the people of want is destruction. Why people of want? Who are those classified people? Is those who does not honor God, does not acknowledge him, and they're trying to fill in their heart God's space with something else. And I may have said this last week, a couple of weeks ago, I don't care what we try to replace God with in our heart. We can't because God has a right to be there. Hey, look at who we, who created us. Satan didn't. So when we take and try to move God out of our, out of his rightful place in our lives, we can always be scrambling trying to get more because it's as a unsatisfied desire in our hearts. And it, or the more we grab at um, material stuff, trying to replace God, we ease leads to destruction. That's that simple. We're not going to replace God no matter how hard we try. Have you never noticed these people that walking in their own wisdom or living their own lives, as they call it, their best life outside of God, it seems as though there's never enough, mm. always clamoring for more. And the person or person who has made God their life and he's first in their life, they're just dissatisfied with, with a little or nothing materially. Because they have everything when God is in our lives and he's first in our lives. Just as we honor him, he honors us He bless with blessings. See, I don't know who told man he could replace God in his life. I really don't. But Satan, Satan again. But if he listened to Satan, he's going to be destroyed. That's right, because this is the scripture says. I'm just telling you what the scripture said. It is destruction if you don't honor him. Just as simple as that. Okay. Now, any questions? We got about five minutes. We can take it through here, and we'll start here. It won't be next week. I'm. I have to take it next week Tuesday off. That's Easter week, and we're going to. Try to make sure it, and get me some rest is one thing. If I always say that and I don't. Any questions or comments? No, ma'am. You can close us out. <laughs> said, I'm taking. I'm over here taking notes. You over there taking notes? Yes, yeah, you a good little note taker. Let us pray. Let's close with prayer. Father God, I, I thank you for this lesson. I thank you for this gathering. And most of all, Father God, I thank you for opening hearts and minds and giving us, making us receptive to your word that we will endure sound doctrine because as many false teachers 
that is witness and untrue. But we know that your word is going to stand on its own. And Father God, I just thank you for using me as your vessel to, care, to, to proclaim the truth of your word. And then, Father God, as we prepare to leave this setting, but never your presence, give us, keep us engulfed in your grace and mercy. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, my dear. Thanks for coming.